All right, all right. Well, if there are no other announcements, then let's prepare for worship through our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn away, our face away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes us righteous. Let us receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. All depends on our possessing God's free grace and constant blessing. Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. 
the gospel of the Lord. Okay, children, where are the where are the children? Oh, there's my goodness gracious! I scared. I, I sent her back. <laughs> oh my! Hey, uh, somebody's got to come up and help me build a house. Oh, Gracie! All right. We're going to build a house. Well, sort of. We won't build the whole thing. Rock. Foundation. A solid foundation. You've got to have, a, got to have a, a foundation for the house, you know. You want to help me? Hmm? Go ahead and put that on the rock. That's all right. Yeah. Look, I'm putting I'm putting these rocks together. Huh? You want to put yours on there? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're all right. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can't go a little faster. <laughs> All right, we're building these, this house, and it's it's almost done. One more little stone right there. Yeah, well, that's that's part of a wall, isn't it? And uh, of course, I build it up higher, and you put a roof on it, and that's your house, right? Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah. You know, God designed us to be creators. Uh, my, my seminary professor, he said, we are co-creators with God. And because uh, that's part of being created in God's image, you know. Uh, and so, so I, we're, we're creators, like, like God. Except for one thing. I can't use the stones. I have to make my own. Out of nothing. Who wants to try that one? Huh? You know, uh, the Bible teaches us that there was nothing. I can't even imagine that. And God, with his word, just with his word, said, let there be, and things came into existence. <laughs> Hebrews says uh, that, uh, the, the book of Hebrews tells us uh, that uh, what was made visible was made from what cannot be seen. And then in the Psalms, you know, the Psalms are a good place to talk about God as, as the creator. You know, by his word, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. And his name shall be praised. His name should be praised by them. Because he created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. We might be creators and we do wonderful things. But always, we always remember that, you know, the, the materials that God has created himself is what we use, including the skills that we have to build. And for that, we give him praise. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. 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 No, She's thinking. She's really thinking. She's got her, her, her thinking cap on. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, good job. That's right. Hey, did anybody see the uh, the video from last Sunday? Did you see the video? Well, you made the video, didn't you? You you were the, you made the video. You were the you were the cameraman. Yeah. I'll take a look at it. You get a wonderful view of my rear end. <laughs> when I was blessing the, the, the dogs. <laughs> you know, you bend over to 
bless the dogs, and, and I forgot where the camera was, and of course, that, uh, well, the best laid plans, you know. It was wonderful. I even got a blessing where the dogs blessed me. <laughs> Look my nose. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lucy in Peanuts is talking to Charlie Brown. And she says, Charlie Brown, why were we put here on earth? And Charlie Brown says, well, it's to make other people happy. And Lucy says, well, I don't think that I'm making very many people happy. And she says, but however, on the other hand, nobody is not making me happy either. And she, she yells out so strong that it flips Charlie Brown, uh, Brown over, uh, you know, back, flip, does a backflip. And she says, somebody is not doing their job. You know, on this day when we talk about God's work, uh, I think the first thing that I would ask is, well, exactly what is it? What is God supposed to do? And, and it, it's not, you know, my idea of what God is supposed to do. It, it's the, the Bible's idea, isn't it? What does the scriptures tell us is, uh, is God's job? And I was just sharing with the young ones the first thing, of course, and that's creation. You know, the, the, God is the creator. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've sh I shared this with you or not but, but, uh, before, but, uh, you know, uh, there was a time in the church when it was believed that God, who is the father of Jesus, is not the God who created the universe. It was believed by some, again, Christians, by some, that the universe was, was evil. And, and God is good, of course. And so this, this lesser God, there's still God, but it was a lesser God, created the world. And, and, and then God begot Jesus and sent Jesus into the world. And, the, and the, a main, one of the main parts of the church is, no, no, I can't, we can't buy that. So they said, because creation is good. Genesis tells us that, right? So, and that got into the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. It was out of that controversy that uh, that portion of the creed emerged. Yeah. So, so God is our, our creator. And uh, one of the loving things about God as creator is the fact that you know, there is destruction in the universe, isn't it? I mean, things get destroyed, uh, big time. <laughs> but with God, the destruction generally leads to something better. And God doesn't just destroy things because, well, he's into destroying things. He destroys things in order to bring to life something better. And, and I think that that's uh, something that, as co-creators of God, we can remember. When, when we think about the things that, you know, we have to tear down in, in order to, to build something new. There was a man, he was out canoeing, and he was, went to a lake, a portion of the lake that he could see the bottom, you know, and there was these black bugs, black beetles, that were walking on the bottom in the mud. And uh, one of them, uh, came up to the surface, actually crawled up the canoe and got on his gunwale and just sat there. And, uh, and, and he blinked at him, he said. I could, you could see him blink. And the sun was hot and the beetle died. And he saw this crack emerge down the beetle's back. And when it split open, he said it was the most hideous mass of flesh he had ever seen coming out of this beetle. Until it got to a certain point where its wings came out and they unfolded and they were this iridescence that just, the sun just bounced off of them in a thousand different colors. 
and, and, the, and the, the, the beetle flew off as a dragonfly. Yeah. Now, the, the, the beetle is, was dead because that casing was still there on his gunwale. <laughs> you know, his clinging, clinging to his canoe. But the dragonfly was out, out seeing a brand new world. You know, he, he had lived down in the bottom of the lake in the muck. And that, that life was gone. That life was gone. But think of the wonder of the new life that this dragonfly was going to experience now. For also, he couldn't see and be with his, uh, his other beetles. You know, they were still in the bottom of the lake. But, and he was flying. You know. so, sometimes God, and most of the time, I think, God destroys things in order to create something new. I went to college in uh, Detroit, a city college called Wayne State University. It was known as the Berkeley of the Midwest. Now, now Berkeley was known as a school with lots of protests, and Wayne State was a, was just going to outdo them. And they, there was a section on the campus that it had a flagpole, and and around the flagpole, I don't know about maybe twenty feet across or so, there uh, there was an elevated uh, stage-like thing that was circular in shape and it was about three feet high and it, and it made a perfect stage and the, the, the some of the students would they would rent or borrow a, a microphone and speaker from the school and and come out to that and get up on that stage and, and do these speeches you know protest speeches and and I remember one guy got up there and and the 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 demon of the day was the military industrial complex. Anybody remember that term? Huh? We have to destroy the military industrial complex. So at one point in his speech, I was, I was in the audience and, I, and with a, some of my friends, and I, and I yelled at him, what are you going to put in its place? You're going to destroy this thing so... What, what comes after? What, what are you going to have next? What, did, tell us. He didn't, of course. Yeah. It was a time when I thought, gosh, you've you got to put something back, something that's constructive. You know? to, to me, that's uh, creating as God creates. That's using God's, doing God's work, but with our hands. Now, the second thing, though, that, that God does uh, is, we, well, it's called redemption, isn't it? This big, wonderful theological word, redemption. You can mean things like repairing, restoring, rescuing. You know? yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, all of that is part of, of redemption. And, of course, Jesus did his greatest work of redemption in Jesus Christ as he restored our relationship with him through Jesus. And as I, I mentioned last week, all of creation is, is going to be affected by this work that, that Jesus is, is, is doing and going to do. And, and I thought, how, how are we redeemers? Huh? Well, every time we forgive somebody, we're involved in the work of redemption. Huh? But also, you know, we, we restore things physically, too. I, I don't know what the projects are the, this year, Bob, but uh, I know in the past some of them have been things where we, where we actually repair things. Yeah. So that's, that's part of being, you know, doing God's work with, with our hands as well. Yeah. And how marvelous that is. There was, um, you know, Booker T. Washington, he founded the uh, Tus Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. He founded it on July 4th, 1881. And he uh, got a lot of donations, many of them from very rich people and large donations, you know. And this little, little old lady, she's a black lady, she, she came up to him and, and she said, Mr. Washington... I know that for the best years of my life, I've been a slave. 
and, and I knows that I am ignorant and poor. But I also know that an education is the best thing that will give my black boys and girls a new life, a new opportunity. And she says, I, don't, I can't give any money. I don't have any money, but I got these eggs. I got these six eggs, she said. And I want you to take these eggs and use them towards the education of these black children. And Washington, in his autobiography, he said, you know, of, of all the donations, and, and he received over a million dollars in donations. He says, uh, of all the donations I ever received, that one touched him the most. Sometimes knowing what we have to do and what, what is needed, that, that's part of the work of redemption, isn't it? She knew that in order to restore opportunity to these boys and girls, uh, they needed to be educated. Yeah, that's, that's redemption too. And when we give in that way, that, we're part of it too. It's God's work, but it's with our hands. And then the last thing is, uh, the, of course, the Holy Spirit. That's the third part of the Trinity. And a fellow by the name of uh, Chamber Haynes, he said he's an author, uh, uh, Bible study creator, uh, preacher. And he said the, the Holy Spirit, according to Scripture, has six tasks, six, six jobs to do. And I'm, I'm, I'll give you three. He said, uh, the, the first one is to confirm that we are children of God. And he said, Paul in Romans says, the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. That's one. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray, too. So, you know, when we don't even know what to pray for or how to pray, Paul wrote, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit gives us the courage to witness to Christ. Jesus said to his disciples before he went uh, to heaven, he said, uh, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. That's the Spirit. For you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and then you go to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And so the, the courage to be witnesses is, is something that God empowers us to do. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to be sending a group of people out to do God's work with their hands. Huh? But it's not just those people who are operating, who are going out today. There's others, too. There'll be the people that uh, uh, have prepared the chili, for instance, and then had to do the cleanup work afterward. Huh? There, there'll be people that will be praying that our group will be safe and that they will be able to connect people with the love of God through their work. Yeah. It's not just with their hands. And it's not just one day either, you know, today, all throughout the year. With our hands, with our heads, with our hearts of compassion, we can find our connection to God, doing God's work with our hands.
Let's work our feet, traveling together, following Jesus to places unknown, walking as friends, marching for freedom, running the race with God's future, the goal. Bless God our feet as we follow your way, sharing the good news of your gospel. God, work our voice, singing together, praise proclaiming to all who were ill, praying for peace, shouting for justice, Claiming God's love for the lost and the least. Bless God our voice as we speak in your name. Sharing the good news of your gospel. God is at work in and around us. Seedings are sprouting and threads on the rise. Washed and set free, humbled and honored. Gifted by grace, we respond in God's love. Bless God our lives as we answer your call. Sharing the good news of your gospel. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation's response to God of life we pray is, hear us when we call. Trusting God at work in and among us, we raise our hearts and voices in prayer for the needs of the world. For your work in the church, we give thanks. Plant and tend relationships among faith communities that in faithful listening, speech, and action, our hands work to bear fruit for the sake of all in need. God of grace, we pray. For your work in creation, we give thanks. Sustain peoples in places affected by ecological devastation and natural disasters. We pray for those affected by the South Dakota Auburn Fire, begun on October 4th of this year and continuing to this day. We pray for those engaged in the Montana Richard Spring Fire, which burned from August 8th through August 20th of this year. Prosper the work of first responders and creation care ministries locally and globally, that with our minds and hearts opened, our hands work to lovingly care for the earth. God of life, we pray. For your work among the nations, we give thanks. Direct leaders and paths of honest service that both their words and actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. Give leaders clarity of vision and the ability to articulate that vision to their people. God of righteousness, we pray. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are wearied by unemployment or lack of adequate food or housing that we advocate for relief and just policy. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. 
We pray for Tiffany Robertson, friend to Caleb Harrison, who has contracted COVID virus and who has been placed on a ventilator. We also pray for others that we name before you. For Tim. God of restoration, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and a spirit of accompaniment as we walk alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God of love, we pray. Receive all these prayers, gracious God. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples after giving thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given to you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, we lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew in us the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, especially of those in need. Bless those who go out from here to work in our community. Prosper the work of their hands. Bless the community that sends them and those who receive them. May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love for all people. To you, O oh God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. Where hope is dim to share the dream and 
help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ to scatter joy like seed. And all our days to cherish light to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace the gospel to proclaim. God's Spirit has empowered us we go in Jesus' name. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.